dear to them, the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord. We your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing.
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who through sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, this John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Sicilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, now weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Her ipsum et cum ipsa et in ipsa, est video patri omnipotenti, en unitate spiritus sancti, omnis o honore gloria, per omnia saecula saecula horum. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audehemus dicere. Patemus erri es inceris, sati vicet ur nomen tu, adveniat regnum tu, fiat Sumus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ur ope misericordia tua duti, et a peccato simus semper liberti, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et eventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Quia Christe quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem eam do vobis, ne despicias peccata nostra set fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae secundum voluntatum tuam, pacificare e coordinare dignaris, qui vivis et regnas in saecula, saecula hordrum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobis cum, et nocieris tuum. On you say, qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you say,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself, says the Lord. Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. Most loving Jesus, I adore thee with a lively faith, who art present in this sacrament by virtue of thy infinite power, wisdom, and goodness. All my hope is in thee. I love thee, O Lord, with all my heart, who has so loved me, and therefore I desire to receive thee now spiritually. Come therefore, O Lord, to me in spirit and heal my sinful soul. Feed me, for I am hungry. Strengthen me, for I am weak. Enliven and sanctify me with thy sacred body and blood. Deliver me from all sin, and make me always obedient to thy commandments. And let me never be separated from thee, my Saviour, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God, world without end.
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Dominus Fabiscus, omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Jesus Christ, at your last supper you prayed to the Father that all should be one, 
Send your Holy Spirit upon all who bear your name and seek to serve you. Strengthen our faith in you and lead us to love one another in humility. May we who have been reborn in one baptism be united in one faith under one shepherd. Amen. of faith that was either made for us by our parents at baptism or that we made at our baptism. The sign of the cross is really a miniature version of the creed, the Apostles' Creed. And what we're saying when we touch our forehead is, I believe in God the Father, the creator of everything, and he made everything in the universe, and he, just, he sustains it in being. And we're saying, I, when we touch our breast, we're saying, I believe in the Son, who is the Word of God made flesh, who became flesh as a human being, who went to the cross, died, and rose again. And we touch our shoulders, we're saying, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the, the giver of life, the one who gives us uh, life and new life in, the, new life in God and the spirit, and spiritual gifts, the gifts of wisdom for our minds and the gifts of love and fortitude for our hearts. So that the, uh, the serious thing about making this sign of the cross is it's a, a reminder of our baptism, but especially a reminder of the truths of our faith that we believe. You know, we can say, I believe in God, I believe the facts about God, it's also saying, I believe God. I believe God the Father. I believe God the Son. I believe the Holy Spirit. What they revealed about themselves. I, I'm entrusting myself to them and praying to them as they reveal themselves. Sometimes you can make the mistake of imagining uh, what God is like. We can, uh, we can uh, get it uh, fixed in our mind that God is a nasty judge, always angry and out to get us. And that's a, a false picture of God. And if we pray to that God, we're not really praying to God as He revealed Himself. Or he, he, we're praying to another God. We're not praying to God as He is. But if we, if we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we're praying to God as He made Himself known in Scripture and in the Church. We're praying to God as He is, which is a protection against our false imaginings. So what, what the Holy Cross is, is a mini-creed. It's a, it's a short version of the Apostles' Creed. It's also a profession of faith in God as he revealed himself. And so in that way, it opens us to him. It's an opening to God, an opening to his grace. spreading the good news through the print media for almost 89 years by God's grace. And today we'll talk with some of the staff of the National Catholic Register about its role as the nation's most complete and faithful news source. So please stay with us. Talk to you later. Mother Teresa knew poverty is not just a lack of food or shelter. To her, the worst kind of poverty is the loneliness, isolation, and disconnectedness of material-rich post-industrial society. People are often cut off from their families, unconnected to a community, treated impersonally like objects. That is why Mother Teresa insisted on doing the kinds of work that required the warm hands and compassionate hearts of the missionaries of charity to give loving attention as much as food and shelter. Mother Teresa and her sisters showed the world how to live a philosophy that is totally different from the nihilist and minimalist philosophy of the West's most educated elites. 
A humble nun with no philosophical training, Mother Teresa and her sisters showed the world how to be the hands and hearts of personalism. Personalism is a philosophy that began in the early 20th century with the thought of Edmund Husserl and Max Scheler, but it took Pope John Paul II to take the insights of this philosophy to illuminate the age-old truths of the Catholic faith, and in a way the modern world can understand. Mother Teresa and Pope John Paul II knew that each human is unique and cannot be replaced. Every person is a child of God, worthy of respect and dignity. True happiness comes in loving God and serving others. I was in a Bible study class in my parish, and I used to run 90 miles a week, and I memorized my canticles and uh, psalms, and slowly it was starting to come to me, you got to do something for the Lord, and I'd always say to myself, i got another marathon to train for, who knows what to do? You ran New York marathon? Oh, I ran five. Five? Yeah, five marathons. Mar oh, no, and, you know, all across the East Coast. I was uh, involved in what is called project financing. You know, you help um, companies to structure their finances, and uh, I helped uh, to do that, and that was basically it. Except that at some point I decided that I could do it on my own. And, um, and I think I was capable, but I didn't verify who I was dealing with. I love my neighbor. She's a missionary of charity, and uh, she used to come to home visits. So I met her um, there, but I didn't like the, actually the, the habit, uh, the way the sister used to dress. To me, it was like a, a beggar or uh, the dress. But uh, something was telling me that to go and ask her the address. And I would go many times to near that sister when she used to come for daily mass. And I would never have the courage to ask her. So all of a sudden my knee went out. And um, then at the Bible study class we had a lady. And she was saying, Jean, you should come to a soup kitchen. We have that on the South Bronx. And I just said, no, that's not for me. And then, contrary to the MC way, she put an advertisement in the local parish bulletin. And in it it said, wanted young man to work in South Bronx with nuns in a shelter. And I said, that sounds good. I'll call up. And the people were honest. And uh, they, uh, it was a sort of a fraudulent situation, which was, um, to me, and I lost it. Then eventually I found myself that I couldn't, um, Worked well because I was without the backing that I had my own funds. I think my ego was hurt. I couldn't understand what happened to me until at some point I realized I returned to the United States. All this happened in Europe, okay? Yes. And uh, I returned to the United States. I was, I had some money, but um, I didn't have the interest to do anything else in that. I was running, I, I had run out of money, almost completely. You don't have a place, you don't have a place to take a shower, wash your clothes, you run out of money, and you don't know where to go. That's one first thing. The homeless people that become homeless uh, for the first time after you spend 15 days sleeping in, in a chair in a coffee shop and drinking coffee because you, know, you don't have enough money to and if you stay in the place, you have to have something to eat. Otherwise, they will ask you to leave. So I couldn't go to begin with and said I did a job. I probably could. intention for the month of September is that each may contribute to the common good and to the building of a society that places the human person at the center. 
the intention for evangelization is that by participating in the sacraments and meditating on scripture, Christians may become more aware of their mission to evangelize. Join us next time for a very